Good morning and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am Richard Bloodworth uh, S. Uh, as I, you know, as I call myself when I'm not doing something directly related to uh, tabletop role-playing games uh, or video games or whatnot. So um, today's video is the last of the Sumerian September uh, videos that I'm doing this year and um, inspired by a gift that I was given uh, this past weekend uh, from a fellow YouTuber and friend and uh, gamer uh, who I had the opportunity to meet for the first time and he presented me this gift of uh, King Conan sitting on his throne uh, as you can see in the picture and I will show you a close-up uh, once I switch scenes. Um, but that's not the only figure I have. Uh, I, as you can see in the background uh, of this uh, image here, I have several uh, lead figures and uh, miniatures and such, as well as another Todd McFarland, um, McFarland uh, figure. And I'm waiting on another one to come in the mail within the next uh, three to five days, as well as the, uh, as well as the, the pop movies. Uh, these are the Funko Pop, uh, which I will go over those as well. So without further ado, let me jump right into full screen mode. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So this is the first figure I received. And I want to say I got this in the early 1980s. Uh, it originally had a plate on here that just said Conan. I don't know if the figure was originally Conan. This was a battle axe, but... When I, when I moved in 2000, um, the head of the battle axe had broken off uh, in the move and uh, just never recovered it. But uh, this was hand-painted by someone. I bought this at Men at Arms Hobby Shop in Center Reach, Long Island, uh, New York. And again, it was sometime in the early 1980s when I purchased this. So this is my oldest Conan figure. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm fairly certain it is Conan. I don't know what company made it. Um, I just know that uh, this was this was painted by in 1983. Uh, now I know that at least the name 1983 by M. Cusinelli Conan. So um, so it was always labeled Conan. That was my very very first. Uh, now, over the course of the years, I would say uh, the next one I got in turn was the McFarlane Conan the uh, Sumerian uh, Series 1. Never took it out of the package. This is the one I like the most, but uh, I do have the Indomitable coming uh, from eBay. I just purchased it for $30, all said and done. Uh, so that included shipping and handling and tax and, and whatnot. So for 30 bucks, I'm going to get the others. Now, I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to open this package up or just put it on display as is. The other one I'm getting without the package, and it was cheaper to get it that way. But the detail on this is just phenomenal. And you'll see that on the, um, you know, on the other King Conan sitting in his throne as well. So moving forward, uh, I have I have these two monolith uh, Conans. So these came from the monolith Conan, um, unpainted because you know I, I'm just the I'm just that kind of maniac that you know I never get around to painting my uh, my minis. Uh, but there were two that came in that set, you know, and I will return them to that set. Maybe someday I'll get around to painting them. Now, I don't know exactly the order that this went into. I believe the Funko Pops were the next one. So, um, let me just get the, let me just get them in the order. So, this is the, this is the, the regular Conan. All right. So, here is the regular Conan and um, uh, they're all numbered 381. So, I don't know exactly you know what that means as far as the um, as far as the series is concerned, but they're all 381. So that's the regular Conan. Now this is the Conan when they 
when they uh, raided, when they raided Thulsa Doom's uh, tower uh, or his his uh, his mountain, and so here is with the face paint and everything like that. So we have that also labeled 381, and finally we have blood spattered Conan. And this Conan here was probably just after he ended up cutting off Thulsa Doom's head. So those were most likely the next in a series of uh, Conan figures that I picked up. Now this one here, I don't know where I got this from. Uh, probably from, probably from eBay. And this is just Conan coming down uh, the steps of most likely Thulsa Doom's, uh, most likely Thulsa Doom's uh, place as well. Uh, his, uh, I can't well, I want to calling it a tower. It wasn't his mountain fortress. Um, so this is uh, Conan stepping down the steps. This is a pretty heavy duty too. So nice, nice heft to that one. And then finally, the uh, the current crown jewel. Uh, I'm, I'm probably not to be replaced even by the other figure I have coming, is Conan, King Conan, sitting in his throne. All right, and you can see, I mean, the level of detail in this is just incredible. You can, um, you can take off his helmet and you can place his helmet. Uh, I've seen it displayed several different ways. I've seen the helmet on his, on his lap there. Uh, which actually is, a, is actually a pretty nice look. I've also seen it where the helmet is on the floor next to his foot and everything. But I kind of like the, the on his lap uh, look of it now too. So um, obviously all of these things, uh, you know, I really enjoy them uh, to display them along with the rest of my, uh, you know, top shelf as you can see, uh, the top shelf on my, uh, on my bookcases is all for displaying various things. You can see um, Conan's father's sword, which I've always liked the design of Conan's father's sword more so than his own that came later. So I, I like that one. Obviously, the my favorite of all the Conan movies, Conan the Barbarian, was the 1982 Conan the Barbarian. You can see Robert E. Howard on a display. He is my favorite author, um, bar none. All right, so he, he holds first place, and then my second place might be tied between Tolkien and uh, and H.P. Lovecraft. Um, probably a little bit more leaning towards Tolkien, but I'll, I'll put them both at, uh, at second place. And um, third could be just any, you know, third through five could be just about anybody. I haven't really sorted that out in my own uh, mind. I'll probably sit down and... And, and try to think of uh, what my third and fourth and fifth places would be. So anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. This one's going to be nice and short. Uh, just a wrap up of just a wrap up of Sumerian September. And uh, next year when I do this, uh, I'm going to do it a little bit more uh, a little bit more focused. Maybe just one video a uh, a week. Uh, and that way I can spend much more time with it and, um, you know, and focus on each of those uh, particular videos uh, in much more detail. And that way I'm not like really crunched because I can never do videos every single day of a month. It just doesn't work that way. So, um, you know, glad to uh, do it this way. And, um, and next year I'll be even more prepared for it. Uh, so let's see what else uh, I wanted to, to talk about. So going forward the channel, you probably noticed that uh, last night, if you saw my live stream, I switched over to a uh, restream from Steamyards. Uh, I found that um, that Streamyards, you know, obviously, you know, the, the price increase had, you know, driven me away. And uh, it went really well. There were some elements of Restream that I thought was an improvement, uh, but uh, you know, check that out and see. Uh, you know, give me some feedback as to uh, whether or not that's a, a better format. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'm actually going to rewatch it 
and uh, and see it for the first time as a viewer and see how it kind of transitioned and everything and see where I can um, where I can see where I can focus on on making it run a little bit more smooth as well. That was the very first time I was doing a live stream using it. I hadn't used it since December of 2021. So it's been quite a long time that I've been with StreamYards. Uh, so I have a feeling they lost quite a bit of business uh, these last couple of weeks since they've raised their prices. So that was uh, another thing that I just wanted to give you some heads up on that you will see some changes on the channel. Um, I have my first my first convention uh, out of the way now. I don't have another one until January, and so I will be getting into full swing with um, you know producing some uh, new campaigns ideas, uh, some new uh, one shots, and just a lot more gaming uh, video content coming up over the next couple of months. Uh, since I'm already all set up for the games that I am running. At, uh, at Philadelphia Game Expo, so uh, Philadelphia Area Game Expo. So I will be, um, you know, just have a lot more time just to focus on the actual gaming that I'm doing uh, between now and then. So thank you all for joining. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to subscribe and to, uh, and, and to hit the alert button so that you'll, you'll get an alert when new videos are, are going live. And um, as always, Enjoy the rest of your week. I look forward to seeing you on a gaming screen or at a convention table sometime soon. You all have a great one. Take care.